Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's first Thursday travel to Larry County show with the Sequoia Tourism Council. So Tulare County is located in Central California, and it is home to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks, the giant Sequoia National Forest, and the giant, excuse me, the Sequoia National Forest and the giant Sequoia National Monument. Basically, there's a lot of big trees to experience a lot of nature and uh, really all these amazing communities to visit. A lot of them are agricultural communities, art communities, basically you need to go. And winter, I know a lot of people think Sequoias and, you know, Kings Canyon, that's the time to go uh, during summer. But winter, and Nancy and I have done this, uh, is really magical too, especially if you want to get some holiday shopping done, have really good food while you're doing it, and also have the quiet of the parks. It's quieter at that point, and if it snows, it's magical. So check out discoverthesequoias.com. Today we are talking about winter and holiday events and all the good stuff of winter in the Sequoias in Tulare County. We have three special guests joining us. We have Donette Silva Carter, who is the CEO and president of Tulare Chamber of Commerce, joining us. She you Go to her website, tularechamber.org. Welcome back, Donette. How are you? I am fantastic. It's great to be back and to chat about all things Tulare County. Hope you're yeah. doing well, Lisa. Oh, doing good, doing good. I, I think we're feeling a little homesick, you know, for the West. You know, every time we do these shows, That's we're true. feeling like we need to get back and hang out in some snow, some big tree lands. And I just, you know, remember our time. Uh, we actually spent New Year's uh, in the Sequoias. I remember mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, like it was the sun was setting and having a really beautiful bottle of wine up in the forest. And uh, just... I don't know. I think people forget that this is a really good time of year to visit. It's quieter. Um, you can enjoy nature, but also get a lot of shopping done, which Donette, I know you like. I know we will have to talk shopping today, but yeah, I enjoy the nature part too, but uh, definitely the shopping part. I just feel like this is such a wonderful region to live in because there's so much that is offered um, for those of us who live here, but importantly to our guests that come and spend some time here well you know you just came back from Maui so coming back yes. home to Tulare County and you're saying that you're like yep this is still the place to be you know what it really is it's it's home I mean I enjoy my oceans and I enjoy traveling as well but we certainly enjoy welcoming people you know who are visiting our area you know we all choose to live in this area for the various amenities that it offers to us. Um, and of course, work too. I love what I do, yeah. need to do, uh, but definitely uh, it's a great area to be a part of. Awesome. And we've also got Suzanne Bianco here from Visit Visalia. Visalia is the county seat of Tulare County. You would think Tulare was, but I think it was way back in history, but we won't tell anybody about that. But so well, Visalia is like this big city. It's beautiful, lovely historic downtown. In fact, everywhere we're talking about Dinuba, uh, Porterville, Visalia, Tulare, everybody has an amazing downtown except for Tulare, uh, not Tulare, Three Rivers, which doesn't have a real historic downtown district. They happen to run around on a river. So that that's a little different. So that's just a beautiful destination on your way into the park. But welcome back, Suzanne. How are you? I'm great. It's so wonderful to be here and to be talking about um, what's coming up in the winter. It's one of my favorite times of year, especially up in the national parks with the snow against the cinnamon colored trees. And it's really, like you said, really a magical, magical time. It is, you know, and it's like, ah, I just want people to know you can get up there and you may have to put chains on your car, right? That's about it. Well, the nice part is that we can live down here where there is no snow and the weather's more temperate and then drive up to the snow and leave it at the end of the day. <laughs> so for those right. that live <laughs> in snow every day uh, and have to battle that, um, we have the best of both worlds right here. Listen, right now I'm recording this from Madison, Wisconsin, and a couple of years ago spent uh, snow season here and really learned what shoveling snow and what non-California snow is about. 
it's a whole different deal. I'm just saying. So like Madison, everybody in Wisconsin, you need to go to California. <laughs> I'm just saying the snow up in the mountains and in the sequoias is beautiful. And like you're saying, you, I mean, people can stay in hotels down off, you know, off the hill, basically, right? And travel up. I know Tulare, you have a ton of hotels. Visalia has a ton of hotels. Um, it, it's really an easy way. You can get up there. You can do it. You can do it and have a good time. And yeah, like you're saying, the cinnamon of the sequoia trees, like it's just, and then the snow around it, it's beautiful. Yeah. There's nothing more magical than taking a snowshoe walk and, you know, it's so silent and you're, you know, clomping through the walk, through the snow. And it's just really amazing. Just really a beautiful time. I haven't done the snowshoe yet. That's something that Nancy and I have on our bucket list. So yeah. we're going to have to circle round back around for another winter in your yeah. area. But I also <laughs> want to bring back Heath Jones. Heath is uh, from the Dinuba Chamber of Commerce. And you can go to Dinuba, is it .com or .org? Heath, I gotta .com. Get, .com, right? So she's the CEO president of Dinuba Chamber. And welcome back. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. So how are things going in Dinuba? Do you guys get to see this? What's it like in winter? I don't think we went there in winter, but do you get to see like the snow in the in the mountains and everything? So it's really cool about where we all live. And I'm from the East Coast, so I could see you know the, the snow, snow. dreadfully <laughs> up close. <laughs> but from here, it could be like even in late, late spring, it could be warm outside and we could be wearing shorts and you can see snow from our windows, which is pretty cool. So, um, so yeah, we do get to see the the snow capped mountains from where we are, and we do have uh, the the benefit of enjoying some cooler days, which I think we all love. Um, and we were just talking; like, we had our Halloween event last night, and it was so nice to be outside. The weather was just beautiful. We like the cool, crisp weather, um, and everybody kind of comes out of out outdoors again from uh, recovery from the hot summers for sure. Yeah, it's so this is partly, I think, with the way your weather is in Tulare County, what makes you such a good agricultural region, right, Donette, that it's it's those, it's gentle, it's, yeah. and then you do have some freezes, and then you'll see smelters going on in, in the orange groves, right? <laughs> and it's necessary, too, like the cool weather for agriculture is, it's important for our farmers, too the way that the seasons change. So that's always interesting to to learn more about too. Yeah, I know Sutton's um, iris gardens used, you know, they used to do iris in, in Porterville, which is why the iris festival happens to this day, but, and, and it's the town's flower. But if you don't have that snap of cold, the iris aren't gonna happen. Same thing as um, daffodils and certain plants need to have that snap of cold. So I think that's a good point. And, and, you've got all the stone fruit too right Donna? stone fruit nuts yeah, a lot of stone fruit i mean we do we have just a huge variety of um, ag production here in the area um, actually we just recently uh, were in conversations with our tulare county ag commissioner and we had a record 2021 for ag production um, over eight billion dollars in ag production and actually if you take a look at our area and then two counties uh, one to the north one to the south we run in the top we are the top three um, ag production uh, areas in the world literally so we feed the world we talk about that we ship 90 commodities uh, across the world and when people come here as visitors, we get a lot of folks coming in saying, what kind of trees are these? Where can I go see certain kinds of crops? What's available during this season that I'm here? Uh, can I go to a dairy and see the cows and look at dairy production? So, you eat know, cheese. <laughs> I was gonna say, and cheese, yes. Cheese processing, milk, ice cream. I mean, we oh, have yeah. all really when you take a look at that and people enjoy seeing that they may, you know, not come from areas that ha really has any ag production at all. So when they come up here, you know, they want to go see cows too. And they want to mm -hmm. see if they can, you know, go to a hog farm or something like that. So everybody has a lot of varying kinds of interests, which I think is super cool. And so when you come to Tulare County, it's about many amenities, some of which we probably even take for granted because we're used to living here, but other people don't. They come here and they, you know, want to know, well, hey, where do you grow the almonds? I need to see almond trees or pistachio trees, things like that. 
Yeah, we'll have to yeah, talk this- on another show. Sorry, we'll have to talk on another show mm-hmm. about the Blossom Trail and all the amazing, yeah. beautiful blossoms that happen in like late February, early March. They're just spectacular and people come from it's all over favorite. to see them. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Well, actually, now is a time for people to plan, you know, to do yes. that. So it's like that happens in, you know, the end of winter, early spring, start to plan mm-hmm. for that because it is magical um you know i always talk about the orange blossom but the yeah, nut trees blossoms. when they they bloom it's just like wow and mm. I, not everyone gets to experience that across the country you know mm. so it's in and around the world so the one thing um i wanted to touch on you know with agriculture and everything is when we talk about holiday season and what goes at the table thanksgiving christmas uh you know what, what gifts are happening no matter what you know what you're celebrating everybody has a different holiday in the winter and i think we should celebrate every single one of them right now. i'm like I'm, I'm all about I, that. Yeah. I i don't i i, I second know, that. i'll i'll, I'll take yeah. in everyone's belief because i just want to <laughs> i i'll eat it all but and i like all the food all the different <laughs> culture yeah. food i love it <laughs> i know we, we we need to celebrate instead of separating and i think that's the thing you know when you go to uh, tulare county is Here's this abundance of crops. And then when you go to the stores, you're getting things that are local. So when you're gifting somebody something, if they have an affinity for California or live in California, I think you you might want to look at getting them pistachios or something. Or if they've never had California pistachios, you may want to make sure they get a taste of them for especially people who, you know, people who have everything. You can never have enough good food that comes from the farm. I'm just saying or wine. I'm just saying. So let's start on that. Let's talk about shopping because, uh, you know, let's start with Dinubo. Shopping, you've got like a little d- downtown historic district. We do. So do you have shops that have things that are locally, you know, crafted or local like foods that people can look for? Um, as far as local foods, we do have a local um, olive oil um, place in Dinuba. And then we have a local coffee shop um, and they sell like gift baskets. Um, as far as like locally, we don't have like a local winery. Um, I wish that we did. Like that would be, I keep trying for that. Cause yeah, because you know how to grow them. grapes in Dinuba. Yeah, it would be, it would be great. So I feel like it would be successful for our downtown um, and those things. But one of the things that that I've always found really successful is for people that are from your area um, and have moved away to make them like taste of home baskets, just Mm -hmm. like fill it with things that remind them of their favorite places in from where they've come from. And you can buy like, uh, like even ranch dressing from certain places. It's amazing how, how, how sentimental we can be about certain things that we, we grew up in and loved. Um, and then put it into these baskets. So it's something that we enjoy doing for people. And I also believe like for veterans or, you know, those who are serving and are out of this country to make baskets uh, from their hometown is so cool. I mean, in Porterville, go to Porterville and get Plano jerky, Stafford's oh, chocolates. Please. I got to, I got to represent Porterville on the food. That's Drink okay. Rivers, That's go to Rhymer's. Go my get favorites. Some- Rhymers, I remember getting stolen bread, right? You know, it's like I, you, get, you stop for ice cream, but they've got stolen and they've got a Christmas shop. And so um, there, there's just certain things that you, you won't find anywhere else. And that's the importance of this show is to really talk about these places, these small businesses, these mom and pop shops that uh, really we need to support more than ever, right? As these big entities come into the world which we need we all want the amazons because we all want that easy delivery and exactly what we want but at the same time let's balance this out right (laughs) and it's fun and that's part of travel is to go shopping so donette you guys have like shopping down in tulare you know what we do we have that combination of the local boutique shopping as well as a lot of brands because we have a wonderful outlet center which has local based restaurants though which is a nice coupling with all of the the movie theater so yes yeah we have a luxury movie theater and they just they already had fabulous reclining chairs and they just upgraded again and um so we were there taking a look at that we have a youth ambassador program so they did a business tour and yeah, they have everything over there at that theater and all of that's co-located, you know, the outlets, the theater and some wonderful restaurants that are there. 
in that area. And then throughout the community, we have the different pockets of shops. So you're going to find um, boutique shops. You're going to find some that are a part of salons that we have here in the community. So just a great opportunity to get out, to do your shopping local. Of course, um, all of us in chambers, we speak to local shopping first uh, before you go out of town. And we just kicked off um, small shopping season, you know, with this um, month of November. So we encourage people to shop local and um, shop small and shop large, shop whatever, just go shopping. shopping. That's say is Spend those dollars. <laughs> yeah, go shop. And when you go into communities, shop those businesses. I mean, I love that when um, I go and visit other communities, I love to go explore and I do a lot of shopping. You mentioned we were in Maui and um, of course that's fairly commercialized, but on a small basis with a lot of the local shops. And just, it was fun for me to explore and have a good time and to see how people present their businesses and what visitor centers look like too. I, I go and do that and take a look at galleries and, and then, you know, we come back and, you know, we look at what our own community has to offer and there's just so much to do here. And, you know, there's, art so you can you know check out galleries you can check out the museums we have in our various communities uh, a lot to do here but yes shopping restaurants fun and entertainment always number one of course donna uh, is the new wolf lodge the great wolf lodge is that going in tulare no it's actually in till it's going to have a visalia address and it is going to be in tulare county property so in count in a county area and we are looking forward to that coming i know Stan is probably on it with you know what that's going to bring with all of the job star area all of the rooms that they'll have there and such a wonderful place for family experiences so that's just another uh, very significant amenity coming to the area and of course we have eagle mountain casino with a brand new casino uh, that will be opening and convention services and um, just a little bit down the road, they're also going to have a um, full service hotel. So lots to do within our region of Tulare County and the Sequoias. Yeah, especially yeah. like related to like staycation, like winter, winter things mm -hmm. to do. I think that those are just great, great additives to our area. Yeah. And, and people coming in, I mean, there's so much to do. If you you're not from there, I, I actually encourage people to get gift certificates too, to these places because it's like, here, here's a gift. You know, you want to come over and see our area. Here's some gift certificates to get you started. You know, mm -hmm. here's twenty bucks for the penny machines. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, <laughs> okay. that's a hey, it. It is fun. And you know, one of the things you were talking a little bit too about is our you know, the locally, the local offerings and the local products that are produced mm -hmm. here along the foods line. So I really feel like we have a great variety in all of our communities. And usually in each community, you're going to find a store that really focuses in on the local offerings. I mean, for us here in Tulare, it's going to be Rosa Brothers Milk Company, which has a great farm to table story of, you know, having the dairy, processing the milk, um, you know, selling milk the old fashioned way in the glass bottles and also creating their own ice cream line. But in their store, they feature products from throughout the region. So, you know, local, locally made uh, Portuguese sweetbreads. They have the Stafford chocolates from Porterville here in the store. They have um, Armstrong olives. They have honeys that they feature. You're making me really hungry. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Butters from Land Lakes. So all kinds and cheeses. <laughs> I mean, just all kinds of products that are local. And I know these kinds of venues, everyone probably varies a little bit, but in our various communities, you can go in and you can find uh, the local products. And, and that's a way that you truly get to experience that community that you're visiting. I love it. And Suzanne, I remember in Visalia going over to Naturally Nuts. Uh, I think it was John that went there. We went there and he, 
you know, even he showed Priscilla our sock monkey all how to make nut butter and showed her different, like this is this nut, this comes from here. We had a whole education. Uh, so that's one of those kind of stores, right? That you can yeah, go absolutely. to. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, when you have, a, his family's been growing um, nuts in the Central Valley for a hundred years or so. And so he's a very down to earth person who, you know, really understands this region, um, you know, water and growing and, and the products that come out of this, out of this region. So if he's in the shop, when you stop by, he's a wealth of knowledge and loves to talk about, you know, um, what agriculture is to not only to Larry County, but to Central Valley in, in general. So mm. it's a great shop. So the other thing I know the downtown district, that's like, you know, you could get all kinds of art. I mean, it's like, a I, I love your downtown because it's still like a living and working space too. And there's you know, it has a little in yeah. history too. Yeah, I agree with that. It's um, sort of um, small town charm, but, you know, also some big city amenities, as Don Donette was mentioning, some of the restaurants and, and shopping that we have are, you know, really can appeal to a, a broad group of people, um, you know, and, and coming up in the holidays, it's such a nice, um, fun place to, to spend the holidays because it has such a, um, a feeling of um, maybe... I'm, I, I can't put my finger on it, but like, you know, sort of, sort of a holiday of the past. It's so it has that, um, you know, charming. Yeah, like um, it's a wonderful life kind of. Yeah, kind of a wonderful life. life. I was yeah, because they've got downtown. twinkly Hallmark lights movie. <laughs> Exactly. You've got the Fox Theater and then the twinkly light, like downtown. Even when we were there last spring, was it last spring? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. I think and but it was it wasn't winter, but it was still like this magical walk down the street with all the lights and it wasn't like this. New York City lights, but it was that balance of you can take a stroll and feel like you're in a downtown, but there yeah. was more than a block. There was like a lot to still see. And people do sh things in their shop windows that we kind of miss these days. Yeah. You don't We're see kind of shop excited. windows they're, anymore, you know? Yeah. They're making a lot of upgrades in downtown as well. They're um, replacing, doing a big project, updating some lighting. And um, so just in time for the holidays, they'll have the trees. Um, are strung with lights. They'll have some new um, lighting along Main Street, repaving, a whole new project that they're doing just in time for the holidays. And so, you know, if people are thinking about um, wanting to spend some quality time with their family and have that kind of experience they remember from their childhood, this is the time of year to come do that. You know, there's a wine walk that's taking place here in downtown. And I know that's something that you'd love to come to, Lisa. It's, a, you know, strolling the streets of downtown and you stop and get a, you know, a little sip of wine from each of the places along the route um you have christmas carolers and um you know just really has such a fun time and that sort of leads into their christmas at the plaza which is a christmas market um you know of course photos with santa um lots of festive eats and drinks train ride for the kids so during a the daytime it's sort of a, a very family friendly festival and then um that in the evening it sort of segues into a um holiday brew fest so uh an adults only kind of um, brew time. tasting so yeah so it's a really going to be a fun um holiday and that's on December the 10th, Saturday. And on December 11th, if people want, they could head up into the National Park up to Kings Canyon for the Trek to the Trees. The annual um, event is a an event that um, venerates the General Grant Tree, which is a um, living shrine to the men and women of the armed services. Um, but they do a, it is also known as the nation's Christmas tree. So the National Park Service is a beautiful ceremony laying a giant wreath at the base of the tree. There are local caregivers dressed in, in costume. So what a fun weekend that would be, you know, start with the wine festival, spend the day on Saturday doing the, um, you know, the Christmas at the plaza and then Sunday heading up to the national parks and, and, um, enjoying this whole, um, wreath laying and, and festive event around the that's, general grand that's tree. So huge deal because it's the only living uh, shrine that we have in the country yeah exactly uh, so it's it's a very unique thing to be able to do and and to experience and well and, and that's one of the parts that are open even if you get a lot of snowfall right the general grant exactly. is one of the ones that you can get to mm -hmm. well and it's fee uh the interest entrance for, I can't say that the entrance fee is waived. You on, went to the um, wine walk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, is uh, entrance is waived on Veterans Day, November 11th. So if you have a veteran that you'd like to honor, it, what a great day to go mm. up and, and just see the general grant tree because it is a living shrine, as you said, to the men and women of the armed services. So, um, you know, that's fantastic. It's also a fee free entry day on the Trek to the Trees Day, the um, December the 11th date. So a couple of times where people can, um, you know, enter the park for free and 
and just explore the amazing um, you know, natural wonders that we have right here in our backyard. Isn't it also fee free on uh, Martin Luther King Day? Yeah, that'll be d- January 16th, I think. Okay, so in yeah. 2023, mm-hmm. to, to mark that on your notes, yeah. yeah, that's that's a again, it's just so beautiful up in the far. You can go to the forest too. The forest has uh, activities, so mm-hmm. I love this. It's a good balance for people. We can go out there, you know, burn off some energy, and then you know, pig out in the towns and go shopping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that sounds like a good balance of a destination. Well, it's nice me. that the National Park Service offers these free, free days throughout the year. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on the park, you know, five to eight fee free days. Mm-hmm. I don't know that Disneyland has any fee free days. Does anybody know that that exists? <laughs> I don't so, think so. <laughs> I think they can raise the prices too. Yeah, (laughs) no, but it is, it is, you know, and and so cost effective for families to go Mm -hmm. up, especially when it's these fee-free days, you know. I do want to say a park pass is a good idea for a holiday gift is a park pass. Excellent Um, idea. Yeah, really, especially if you buy it locally. Uh, then that money actually goes into that specific park. So, um, and the other thing, Sequoia uh, Parks Conservancy, I want to give them a shout out as a shopping destination for folks that are avid lovers of the of Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park. They have gifts and then they have all those, you know, amazing programs. They really do have cool yeah. programs. The snowshoe walk in the snow, as I was telling you earlier, they lead those, um, they lead um, tours, I guess, uh, teaching people how to snowshoe. And so you can snowshoe amongst the giant sequoia tree. That's a, a an experience that is a once in a lifetime, amazing experience and would be a great Christmas present. Could, could you do that and a wine walk at the same time? <laughs> you might, you might have to sober up in between, but yeah. <laughs> I just want to just fall over those shoes. I know, Heath, I know you're shaking your head, but like, you know, that's what we're thinking. You could do a couple steps, see how it I happens. Mean, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> it just sounds like fun to me. It's like, here, like stop at the tree and say, hi, big tree, give me some wine. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But our tree, I, I, you know, those trees are, I, you know, this is, you know, Sequoia Kings Canyon and then part of Yosemite is really the only places we get to see them now in, in you know, uh, in California, in this country. So it's um, just such a unique thing to do. But I love that all the towns, you know, this his- history, uh, go to the museums, too, while you're there. You know, that's the thing, too. In, in your towns, you each have amazing museums to to visit and experience while in between shopping because you need a break. You need to have wine and food breaks you know, a little museum history. So you get to know more about the area that you're walking through, you know, and majority of parking is free from what I remember. That's a big deal. Yeah. And the other thing is too, if you download the app before you get to the forest where we sometimes have service issues, you have everything right there in the app. Like, and you can just go through all the maps and everything right there. And, and then in addition to that, the general Sherman tree has handicap accessible access right there at the foot of it so even if you've mobility mm-hmm. issues it's very easy to get to extremely easy to get to and and the boardwalk too i mean that boardwalk yeah. you know around round meadow is so easy yeah there is that whole new app for the park service that everyone can just download on their phone it is really cool to have because trust me you can get lost <laughs> well i mean just i don't know how i know get there and you're like <laughs> i want to do something new and and mm-hmm. it's nice to be able to pull that up and have that in front of you Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of accessibility, the park does have an accessibility guide, um, and they have a really great video series that talks that has um, um, that shows people with varying disabilities how they can explore the parks. And so, you know, really making that move to um, let you know everyone know that the park is suitable for everyone. So, mm-hmm. regardless of any sort of um, you know limitation you might have, the park can can welcome you with lots of. Mm-hmm. Um, these great video series to let you know what to expect. That's so so important. One of the things when we started our tour, uh, obviously at the beginning was starting on just national park units, but now we do everything. But one of the things we encountered where a lot of people thinking you had to be like an athlete to go into national parks and be a backpacker. And I'm like, no, like, seriously, I'm not an athlete. I can do the round meadow walk. And it's like what a mile and a half around to see the big trees. You can see America's icons really you can um in in all of these parks have something that is accessible even state parks state forests national forests i mean so many parks really work at doing that uh your area does a great job of that but before we go i do have to ask each of you 
let's look at events, holiday events. What gets you into the season into Larry County? If there's a specific event, specific destination, is there a specific food place? Like, you know, if you've got family coming for the holidays, <laughs> what are you doing? I know, Donna. Tell me we don't have to pick one. <laughs> I know, that's right. I'm looking my, rolling my eyes going, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, you've got Portuguese, you got all that Portuguese yeah. food. What would be like a Christmas Portuguese food? Like, there's all kinds of great um, treats and, and one which is like a very basic and I noticed the Portuguese bakery was just advertising that they have chestnuts so the roasted chestnuts we call them oh, wow. in Portuguese and um, so I haven't had a chance to get over there but I have to go pick up something we actually have a sister city in Angra Terceira and this week we will welcome the mayor and the vice mayor here so we are putting a treat basket so that they have our local flavors plus it can take a look at what we have an offer that's locally made to celebrate that culture so uh, lots of wonderful things and so for me I think it's getting into also the events and activities I love to go to various different kinds of craft shows, makers markets, and uh, we have Rusty Roots coming up in a couple of weeks here, and she's got all kinds of vendors that are going to have a lot of holiday shopping available. So those kinds of things get me into the season. I'll, you know, travel within our region because everybody has different kinds of uh, events like that. And then, of course, um, all uh, the Christmas parades, you know, we have that coming up. Um, on December 1st in our downtown and always a lot of fun and they have this really cool theme this year and it's called um, I Spy Santa so they're asking the floats to put hidden Santas so to give the kids something else and the adults to something else to look for and you know search out while you're watching the parade go through so I think that's going to be fun but um, so I think all of that and you know and of course there's the food and everything for the region as well but the various different kinds of events and activities, the big, we have our Christmas tree auction that the hospital does, Festival of Trees, and another one up at St. Anthony Retreat Center in Three Rivers, and so just all of these different kinds of events definitely uh, put you in a festive mode. Cool, cool. Suzanne, what about you? What what are you what are you gonna eat, drink, and be married with? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like Donette said, you know, our holiday season, I think really um, well, it probably starts on Thanksgiving Day when we have the um turkey trot that is a um fundraiser for the food bank here. I mean, it feels like the entire town comes out and everybody does either the 2K or a 5K or a 10K, depending on how ambitious you are. But that I'll sort of cheer. kicks off, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that kind of kicks off the holiday and then um, um, the Monday after Thanksgiving is our holiday parade down Main Street, and that's a lot of fun seeing all sorts of um, entries there. So that's a really, really fun holiday um, activity that gets me sort of in the mood. I'm excited this year. The um, Walk in the Winter Wine Derland is the wine walk that they're going to have. See, on, I knew, I knew, yeah. I knew. <laughs> Yeah, December the 8th. So that'll be fun this year. That's new. Um, and so that's kind of the, blocking uh, my calendar. Now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and, and wrapping that around the Christmas uh, Plaza, speaking of the makers markets, they'll have that there as well as, you know, lots of activities for kids and, um, you know, the, um, the holiday brew fest in the evening. So all of those sorts of things, um, you know, start planning now for that kind of time, because to me, it feels like the, the time goes by so quickly. It's sometimes it's hard to just sort of enjoy the moment and savor it unless you really just put it on your calendar and plan to, to take advantage of it. So, you know, spend a weekend and, and just really focus on spending time with family and friends. That's that's what's important to me. I don't probably need anything underneath my Christmas tree, but I do enjoy spending time with, with family and friends during the holiday. So that's what yeah. I look forward to. Now, what about on the food side? Do you have a special thing. I, I have a cookie that I make that I only make it at um, Christmas. And so that's always kind of a fun, a fun thing. So it's a what? chewy chocolate ginger cookie that is super, oh, super good. delicious. Yeah. So <laughs> I look Ooh. forward to that. <laughs> See now Nancy does rum balls. Yeah. And we don't have to turn anything on for that, but we do have fermentation going. <laughs> Apparently, it was some kind of something. <laughs> I know, all I know is the rum does something to those little balls of, you know, chocolate and wafers and goodness. It's, you know, but that's the thing is traditions and we can make new traditions too when we travel by going to specific places. So Heath, what, what is it for you? 
Hmm, I really like this time of year. It's my favorite time of year. Um, so I think that, you know, I love the downtown um, parade that we do at Christmas. We do it in the evening after dark. Um, so it's an electric parade. Um, and just seeing the creativity of, of what everybody does is super fun. And that is December 3rd. And then the next week, we're doing a um, Grinch Day of Sharing. And that's a toy drive and pancake breakfast. Wow. And so we raise um, we raise money for toys. And then we also take toy donations. And those are delivered to our local school. So we kind of partner with the school system to do that. And I, I think it's a great event. It's a lot of fun. My husband um, is best friends with the Grinch. And, and so he's built some stuff to make that happen for us. Um, and my son has a good time doing it. So it's kind of like a family family togetherness that that we all kind of love um and then then we're also doing a um a friends giving just within our chamber leadership and our ambassadors so that we're getting together and actually just kind of you know taking some downtime taking that respite that we need from serving um, which i think is important and then um, as far as food i love eggnog and we have so many great dairies locally Like I'm just, I'm here for like the local eggnog. It's probably, it's just mind blowing how different it is here than anywhere else. So Wow. it's probably my favorite thing. I didn't think of that. That's, that's cool. But I love what you're saying about the downtime, because I think that's something important for all of us in, in business to remember, like our colleagues, our, our partners, our friends to just, you know, take that time out. Even if it's just an hour, it makes a difference, you Yeah. know? Yeah, It and really we get does. so caught up in serving sometimes, I forget that, I think that we forget to take that time to, you know, rebuild relationships, build on our communication skills, and just take some time to enjoy each other's company. Mm, good point. And this is what I think, uh, you know, businesses look at retreats, you know, small retreats, and uh, we'll be talking about that soon, but I'm just saying start planning now, and this sounds like a good place, and maybe it should start with a cup of eggnog and go get some cookies from Suzanne, go to Rosa Brothers from ice cream. I mean, this is sounding good, and we can go to Stafford's. I'm sorry. I just got to talk about the wee gooey bar. I always, I want an ooey gooey bar. I was looking at photos of it the other day. Um, we've got a nice feature about Tulare, Taste of Tulare up on uh, in Eat, Drink, Be Merry magazine. And while we were putting stuff together, I was like, you know, this is dangerous. There's so much good food. Like we could do a whole magazine just of amazing food of Tulare. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's it's good. Well, thank you all for joining us. Again, everyone, Discover the Sequoias is the website. So discoverthesequoias.com. Uh, learn more about Dinuba, go to dinubachamber.com, visit visalia.com, and also go to tularychamber.org. And we're here every first Thursday talking about Tulare County and the Sequoias, uh, California Sequoia country. And you can keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thank you all and happy holidays. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>